It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Carrie Fink, guest hosting for Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with the information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. And our topic today is stroke a year later. Joining me today as our guest is Joe Steckler himself, president of Helping Seniors of Brevard, and also Chris Marriott, who is physical therapy rehab director of Gentiva Home Healthcare. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank it's you. interesting to be in your seat <laughs> yeah. and have you as the guest. But the topic today is stroke show a year after the stroke. And we were just going over the calendar. December 19th, year ago, December 19th, 2013, you had what the doctor said was a very, very serious stroke. Yeah. And I remember talking to you at the hospital literally probably two weeks after that, and you said, I want to record my recovery and hope that becomes a point of inspiration for people on how you can recover and work through a stroke. And on January 21st, so basically two months after that, we were filming together at Health South Sea Pines Hospital, and we were literally taping you as you were doing physical therapy, as you were doing occupational therapy, and as you were also doing speech therapy. And then one month after that, February 20th, we were actually recording Helping Seniors television programs there at Health South Sea Pines. And what an amazing recovery it's been. How do you feel a year after the stroke? Actually, I feel pretty good, Carrie. I, uh, I've noticed that uh, on my left side, I, I had the stroke on the right side, so it affected my left side. And the only effect I think I really can account to the, to the stroke is I have a little numbness on the left side of my tongue. And if I'm not careful, I will slur some words. So I have to be careful about that. But I've noticed recently and going up and down steps that I favor my left side a little bit. I have no problems with arms. Um, I, I have been in the gym working out, but I, I had a condition called fibromyalgia along with all this other stuff. And it, it just really knocked me for a loop for a while. So I'm back now on doing the physical therapy <laughs> that the Gentiva people put me on. And I'm trying to get my strength and my, my breathing under better control so I can go back to the gym to work out. But as far as um, the stroke, I feel that um, it's extremely important uh, for, for the patient to be motivated. Um, I was lucky. I, I think the, there were a lot of people praying for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, a combination of prayer uh, the physical condition that I was in at the time, um, and for some reason, unexplainable, a major stroke didn't affect me the way it did a lot of other people. And Chris, you and I have talked about this, and, and, and you know from your work as a therapist that uh, strokes can go anyway. A, a huge spectrum of, of a mini stroke or TIA, which literally comes and goes and, and really doesn't need any therapy at all to quite devastating mm -hmm. hemiplegic dense stroke which people can suffer. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things you asked, said I, you said you really had a passion so we could document the recovery process and help people understand since it's such a prevalent uh, type of situation that can, that can come up and come up suddenly. What remembrances do you have actually of the actual stroke itself when, when it was happening? What I remember that, that was December 19th, 2013 was my last day of physical therapy by the Gentiva Home Health Therapist. I finished my exercises. I walked her to the door. And I don't remember anything after that until several days later in the hospital. What in retrospect, my wife came home with three of her grandchildren from Virginia. Uh, they came in for my 80th birthday. And Terry saw me laying on the bed and she thought I was saying my prayers. 
and uh, way it went out and it made a lot of noise. And when I didn't come out, she figured something else was wrong, came back in, and she heard me making a strange sound through my, my airway. And she immediately called 911. One of my granddaughters is in training to be a nurse, another is a hospital administrator, and a young boy. He went out looking for the, the ambulance because Terry had called 911. Turned out that number one was gone from our, our uh, mailbox. street address, from the <laughs> mailbox. So he found the uh, ambulance at the wrong house, got him back there, and uh, the rest is history. They put me in that ambulance, and Terry was rode the front seat. And it was amazing to her uh, the amount of cars that just when the, when the ambulance has the siren going, people just start to stop and they don't move to the side mm -hmm. so an ambulance can get there and get the people to the hospital. But I didn't honestly remember, I have no remembrance of the stroke at all. I will say that um, physically, it affected me a little bit, not much. Mentally, uh, uh, memory-wise, uh, I have had no problems. Uh, I've been able to do everything I could do before. I remember phone numbers. I, uh, the good Lord is kind to me. Yeah, no doubt. And for those of you who are uh, watching, you may be interested to know that if you look at the Helping Seniors of Brevard dot org website, Helping Seniors of Brevard dot org website, you'll see that there are a number of television programs that are actually. You, you talk about the different things. You met, for example, with the first responders who uh, actually came out and took you to the hospital. Uh, yes. There's interviews with them. There's an interview with both the uh, doctor, your emergency room doctor, who treated you that, 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 at that time, and the uh, registered nurse who was there. There are, um, then uh, they talk about what happened there. Then we also uh, have episodes where you were uh, had the opportunity, it was amazing, two months after the stroke. Actually, to be, it was only a month. Yeah, to be interviewing the doctors who were in charge of your care there at the Health South Sea Pines and your rehabilitation. So if you want to take a look at this, there's all available on-demand video, and you can find those on the website. But a question I wanted to ask you was, what was it like, what did you feel it was like going through the recovery process? Just Hard. The yeah. Hard, it wasn't easy. Um, I can very definitely remember when that physical therapist had me on those parallel bars walking and uh, throwing a ball to me and getting me to catch the ball. And then I accused her of throwing the ball further to the right or farther to the left, so she made me stretch Sounds and move. like a therapist, yeah. Uh, it, it's not easy. It, it really isn't easy. And then you, you're on a table where they got your leg and they want you just to slide your leg back and forth like this. Generally speaking, that's easy. But after you've had a stroke, it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the greatest asset I had working for me was there were a bunch of people praying. Mm -hmm. I very definitely believe in the power of prayer. Um, I had a strong will to try to come back from this. But I also happen to be a believer in the fact that uh, we will stay on this earth as long as the man above wants us to stay here unless we hasten it unnecessarily ourselves. Not only have I had a stroke, but I had a complete dissection of my ascending and descending mm -hmm. aorta all the way down into my stomach, and I lived through that. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did I live through that? Uh, I, I don't know. I think you answered it just just before you, you just you, before you, you stayed. A, yeah, absolutely, you've got a huge purpose on this planet, <laughs> yes. and, and you're going to be 110 before we all know it, Joe. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. But Chris, you you as I'll go back into my host yeah. role here. I'll ask a question sure. right now. Uh, as long as you've known me for the last year, you've seen me do different things. You've been on different radio and TV shows with me. But have you been able to ascertain as a therapist any changes in, in where I was a year ago to where I am now? Uh, I am amazed at, at how fast and how fully you've recovered, really. Uh, um, and, and it's a power, and you think you hit a nail on the head when you said that your, your level of health and conditioning and work ethic prior to that and during your recovery is, is what we see as key to success as therapists. Someone who's motivated in their return but also their, 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 their body knows and their body has done exercise and work in the past and, and that probably really sped up your recovery for sure. 
My, you know what one of my greatest fears was? When I was down the Sea Pines, Hell South Sea Pines, was my first shower. Mm. I just couldn't imagine sitting in that chair and with that cold water hitting me, and I made <laughs> sure that that, that CNA had had uh, had the water good and warm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the other thing is, you know, we all all have a uh, a sense of modesty about how we appear in the state of undressing for members of the opposite sex. But there was um, the uh, the attendant was going to give me a shower. I said something. I said, you know, this is it's not the same. She said, um, she said, I'm married. My husband. She said something. I said, yeah, but you're not married to me. There's a difference. <laughs> and uh, but you know, we can impose obstacles, and some of the obstacles I had to learn to get over were some of the very simple things. Some of them was that. I did get tired when I did my exercises, and there's a point, and you as a therapist know this, there's a point at which you don't want to uh, try to push it too far. Right, absolutely, because then you're, you're, you're doing detriment to your recovery. So there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a gradual increase in how much the therapist should be pushing you from your first week of recovery to, to weeks or months later, for sure. But a lot is dependent, Chris, upon that patient-therapist relationship. Yes. And the people I had from Gentiba were very, very good. I, I, I would stack Beth up with almost any therapist I've, I've worked Absolutely. with. Absolutely. She's been with Gentiba mm -hmm. probably as long as I have, a little bit less. And she's one of our clinical mm -hmm. ladder recipients, which is an exceptional higher level that we recognize in therapy right. treatment abilities. So you, you have a great one for and sure. And she's Beth. one strong lady too. She is, she is. Yes, she is. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think so. I, I was gonna ask the question, what do you think the importance of having uh, good therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, how does that impact, in your mind, your recovery versus just what naturally might have happened? Well, I'll speak from a patient's standpoint. Let Chris address the mm -hmm. therapist side of it. Uh, when I was in Health South Sea Pines, the they, uh, speech therapist determined, you know, it's not just the ability to, to speak clearly. Um, it also affects your ability to swallow, mm -hmm. eat food. Mm -hmm. um, that therapist is looking at a lot of things. And as long as they didn't try to feed me those eggs they had at Health <laughs> South Sea Pines, I could eat anything. But um, the eggs were not good, not the way they fixed them. <laughs> and <laughs> but they quickly determined that uh, I really didn't need speech therapy. But what they did was they doubled up my physical therapy when I said I didn't need the mm -hmm. speech therapy. Uh, and I know that was a good thing. But at the time when I kept going back in a wheelchair and having them start putting me through mm -hmm. these exercises, I wasn't sure that I shouldn't have stuck with the speech therapy a little right. longer. Yeah. Could have faked a bit of slurring, Joe. You would have got away from the physical therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's, Joe's very right. I mean, the, we are a big coach to you, and, and I think that's why it probably worked out so well with your therapist and yourself, because you're a learner, you're a doer, and the more that we can teach you why you're doing things and, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's doing it yourself, but it's also repetitions. When you're doing a stroke recovery, it's reprogramming the brain. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just like when you taught your kids to walk or to sit up for the first time. Mm -hmm. You gotta do things over and over and over again to retrain that what we call a plastic brain. It, it, mm -hmm. it has to be retaught how to do things. Mm -hmm. So yep. the more we can do it, the more repetitions. Uh, and, and again, doing it yourself is a yep. huge. I think if there's one area that I could have uh, devoted more time to, and I need to do it now, because um, I think you said it, you got roughly a two-year window to make changes happen positively. I need to address my balance issues a little, mm -hmm. little harder than I have. And it's easier said than done, quite frankly. Uh, the older you get, um, when you have a stroke, uh, you also forget that the body hurts. Mm -hmm. And, um, Pain is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just don't want to move, but I know that I have to do that. 
And for you, Joe, I mean, many people real, know that you've got many other medical issues mm -hmm. apart from your stroke that were compounding your sure. difficulty with your back and with your hip. Uh, so you, you had to deal with that on top of recovering yeah. from stroke. You know, I didn't think about the back anymore. <laughs> I, I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. So many other we things. We won't talk about it then. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's an odd question. Um, therapy and treatment is kind of like a chicken and egg. And that, that's a question for you, Chris, although I'm not sure totally how we interpret that. Well, I mean, a lot of the therapy we do with stroke is, is, is activities. Uh -huh. uh, we used to always laugh as therapists, and then the main way to recover uh, a limb which has suffered a stroke is to tie the good one behind their back. Ah. So we, we purposely try to use it, and, and we don't want you stabbing your head with a fork or anything like that, but to try to use that injured limb mm -hmm. as much as you can. So actual function is actual oh. therapy. So which is, you know, the chicken or the egg, or are, are you actually trying to use something or, you, or is that part of therapy? Um, and then a lot of what we do is, is getting the body again, used to doing repetitive motions and actions and reteaching it, so. Yep. I, my, my stroke didn't seem, didn't seem to affect my ability to use either my left or right arm. Mine, as I came out of the initial effects of the stroke, mine was sort of an overall thing, my whole body. Mm -hmm. is, is, how do you account for that, Chris? Some of it can be like a, a coordination versus a weakness. So you may not have noticed any muscle deficits, but just the whole thought process of how to, to use those muscles has to be retrained as well. So it's, it's a series of conscious actions that in the past, you might have subconsciously not even thought about how to use your arms or put things together or put words one after the other. Uh, a lot of recovery from stroke is consciously thinking and doing things until they become second nature. I found that uh, getting myself in a right frame of mind mentally was something that helped me do the physical part more easily. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to explain that. A lot of it is in motivation. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is knowing that, that there's still work to be done. Um, and Because and, you can motivate yourself right out of recovery. Mm -hmm. you, you can get down on yourself and a lot of it is that positive thinking that, that, that you're putting yourself through this because there's, a, there's an end goal to be met. So we play coach and cheerleader as a mm -hmm. big part of our therapy and, and then we give people hope and, and, and knowing that this hard work will pay off. Uh, you know, the biggest loser that way, that show on the TV and yeah. the, one of the biggest roles is, is, is a motivator and, and to give them that extra reason why they need to work through all these difficult times. Yeah. I, I felt, you know, I, after I, when you asked me a question about how much did I remember, I remember that when I first so I was told and realized that I'd had a stroke. I, in thinking about all my previous medical problems, and at the time I was 80 years old, um, why me? Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do with all this mess? And that's mm -hmm. when I got the idea that if I could convince the doctors to let me bring that film crew, mm -hmm. have you come in, mm -hmm film this stuff, and people could see. And I remember very clearly, they had me on uh, doing one exercise, and I looked right at the camera, and I said, folks, this is me. I did have a stroke, and these are exercises I'm doing, and believe me, they may not look easy to you, but they're not easy to me. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes we have a hard time putting ourselves in somebody else's position mm -hmm. and saying, oh, come on, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's easy to say you can do something, sure. but it's not so doggone easy to do it. Right. And I think that's where the motivation and having uh, some people in your corner that, are, that know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've been with Gentiva for a hip replacement for recovery from uh, from a dissecting or aorta and and from stroke, so three major three major things: mm -hmm. speech, occupational, and physical therapist knew what they were doing, mm -hmm. and they were able to encourage me 
to not only do these exercises when they were at the house, but to do the exercises when they weren't there, which is an extremely important thing to do for anybody who's in kind of a major problem where, where rehab is, is ordered. It's not just that you do what they tell you to do, it's you've got to do what you know you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. You can't overdo it, but certainly underdoing it is probably the greatest self-detriment that you can right. cause yourself. The biggest thing we, we've talked about is compliance with our patients and mm -hmm. uh, how are they following through with what we're teaching them or, or, or do they have a good caregiver or someone that we can teach. Uh, all those things are, are, are a huge factor in, in the recovery yep. of, a, of any illness. You hit it. The therapist organization is a teaching organization. Mm -hmm. The patient is the learner, mm -hmm. and the faster and the better the, the patient learns what the teacher is trying to impart to them and does that, the better chances yeah. you have are going to recover even more than you would have thought possible, especially from a stroke. And that's probably one of your biggest things is, Joe, is you're a sponge of knowledge. You want to learn about mm -hmm. whatever you're doing or going through and then disseminating that information out. So you're you're, you're learning and, and really want to, to, yeah. to, to know it for your own benefit, but then you're turning around and, and helping hundreds and not thousands of other people with Absolutely. what your knowledge is. Well, I watched my mother go through a stroke and I watched her give up. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think people should give up. Um, when you say give up, it's a strong word. Um, you don't always know what's going through somebody mm -hmm. else's mind. so. I'll be kind to think about, maybe mom will tell me someday why she did what she did. Right. She didn't want to go through therapy, right. and I didn't right. understand, because she was always a fighter. But she was disfigured, disfigured and she was paralyzed. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't have that. Right. I was fortunate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a question I did want to ask is, you know, the topic of, of probably the word fear is probably the right word when you sort of grasp the reality of, of, of the fight that you're going to have to walk through to, to, to bring yourself back. How do you, how did, how did that impact you? I mean, you, 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 uh, there's no doubt that over and over the message of never giving up and, and, and really being compliant with the things that might help you, but how much to get that motivation, I'm sure after you've gone through something like that, it's like, uh, an oh wow, oh no kind of moment. How do you work yourself through that? You know, that's probably one of the easiest questions for me to answer. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any fear. Uh, I don't think I did. Mm -hmm. My only fear was that, that a power greater than me decided I was supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. So my fear was that I wasn't going to do what I was supposed to do to get to where that other power wanted me to mm -hmm. be. That was motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a religious person. I believe in God, mm -hmm. and I believe in prayer, but I also believe in a person doing the very best they can to overcome a situation, whether it be a physical situation or a financial situation or just living a life. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to meet the challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the tools to uh, accept the challenge and it just went from there. Yep. I've always thought that, that God gives you these mm -hmm. situations uh, because he knows you can handle it. You mm -hmm. know, and people say, why me, why me? And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and because probably you're probably better mm -hmm. apt at, at working through it than maybe some people who, who couldn't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think you're a living proof of that from what you've gone through for many medical issues that you can handle it. And, and not only that, but, but Make some lemonade out of those lemons you keep. But, you know, Absolutely. Chris and, and, <clears throat> and Carrie, other people's presence and other people advocating for you and encouraging you, um, they play a tremendous part in a person's recovery from any kind of adversity. Mm -hmm. If people shut you off or turn you off, you've lost. Mm -hmm an extremely important uh, asset in your own recovery. Mm -hmm. But the interest of other people, a smile from somebody. Um, I remember that uh, I had been at Sea Pines a week, and this little girl, she was five years old at the time, Bailey. Her mother and dad brought her down to see me. Bailey stood at the door of the room, walked over there, and, and 
came up next to my bed and put her arms down there for me to pick her up. I picked her up. She lay down in the bed. I put her head on a pillow right next to me. Yeah. Tremendous incentive. <laughs> yeah. When you have people like that, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of difference in how you approach any, any situation. Yeah, that's so true. We have about a minute left, and maybe, maybe as kind of a closing question, Joe, as, as, as a person who's not only uh, been blessed to be a survivor, but you've actually thrived on it. You've actually made it your work to be sure that you've laid a, uh, you've lit a pathway for other people who may find themselves in a similar situation that they don't have to necessarily uh, just go it alone. They, there's resources that Helping Seniors is putting together that will help people understand, you know, here's the process, here's what you do, here's what can happen, here's how it can turn out. What would you look at the camera and tell somebody this is, a, this is my advice for you. I think you have to believe in yourself. I have to think that you believe, you have to believe that there is help out there. And you take a combination of the help available and your own determination and the love of your family and friends makes all the difference in the world. Those are prime ingredients for anybody recovering from anything. And I bet you say the same thing. Chris. Absolutely. Nothing more to be said. Yeah, that's a great way to close it yeah. out. Thank you for joining us today for this episode of Helping Seniors.